Welcome to OK Hobby Time. My name is Adam, and in this video, we're continuing our story by crafting medieval gallows. In the last video, we left off with the party arriving at a mysterious town and making a stop at the local tavern. It wasn't long before they were interrupted with screaming coming from the courtyard. The party left the tavern to investigate the noise and discovered a man covered in boils and pustules, writhing in agony. The plague citizen ran to the top of the town's gallows, where he let out a scream, then dropped to the floor. Most of this terrain piece will be made out of XPS insulation foam. I'll be using a hot wire table to cut down the foam into miniature beams. I figured out the dimensions of the different beam sizes ahead of time, so I could get all my pieces cut at once. I'll be using a handheld hot wire cutter to add wood texture to the foam. This technique creates a deep, stylized wood grain that looks great on the tabletop. Once the pieces are textured, it's time to start creating the gallows. I'll be following a template I created ahead of time to make sure this build comes together properly. I'm using quick dry wood glue to stick the foam pieces together. The gallows are framed out like a real wooden structure. Even though the trapdoors won't be usable, I'm still leaving a space for them. A miter box and a hot wire cutter is used to get some clean angle cuts. I then use this piece as a template to create all the other braces. These are all then glued into place to give the build some extra detail and durability. The top of the gallows is put together with a few larger beams. This piece is also given some braces to match the bottom portion of the build. I'm fast forwarding a bit ahead to the point where I changed my mind about the floor treatment. I wanted the planks to look chunkier and more stylized to match the rest of the builds in my town. I wasn't too worried about the light damage this caused since this will eventually be covered up again. Before redoing the floor, I decided to tackle the stair section. An important thing I kept in mind for these stairs was to make them playable, meaning a miniature could be placed on them and be able to support itself. I kept one on hand during the construction of this section to occasionally measure and make sure the fit is good. I'll be adding a few 3D printed bits to this build for some extra detail. I found some trapdoors on Thingiverse that I modified to fit my gallows. I like that they have slats which allows you to look through them. This gives some purpose to the space in the frame below. Time to redo the floor. I'll need some new planks so I'll be cutting down some more foam on the hot wire table. There was nothing majorly wrong with the previous floor, I just realized it didn't match the look I was going for. A big part of scratch building is being able to self-edit your work. That means being able to look at your work and know that something is off. This could be either proportionally, stylistically, or more. And once you know that something is off, you can improve on it either within the same project or just keep what you learned in mind for the next project. Being reasonably critical with your own work is the fastest way to improve. But remember, having fun is also a priority. You don't want to be too critical to the point where you're no longer having fun. The top of the gallows is then glued into place. I'll be adding some extra reinforcements to the top part by inserting pins into the beams. I'll also be reinforcing this section later with some braces like the bottom portion. Next, I'm going to be working on the 3D printed bits. All these pieces are primed using my airbrush. Now 
I'm quickly painting up the Plague Citizen using contrast paints. His role isn't going to last long in our story, so I'm not spending too much time on him compared to our heroes. I have an entire mini story planned out that will span multiple videos and crafting projects. Make sure to watch until the end to get a hint at what will be built next and where the story will go. I'm attaching the rest of the bits to the gallows using wood glue. These crows add some very fitting detail to this build. Some final braces are put into place to support the top half. I also placed a lever in the back since these gallows are using trapdoors. Time for paint. I start off with priming the terrain piece in a coat of black craft paint. I'm pretty thorough with this layer since I don't want any pink showing through. Next up, I paint the gallows in the darkest of my browns. I'm making sure to water down my paint for more even coverage. Afterwards, I dry brush a lighter brown over my previous layer, making sure to keep the darker brown in the deepest recesses. I mix in an even lighter brown into my previous mix for a highlight color. This is applied to the edges of the piece for a weathered look. Here I'm painting up some smaller details. Next, I create a moss mixture by combining PVA glue and flock. This is going to help break up the brown. Here I'm just highlighting the crows to give them a bit more detail. And then I push the moss further by using my airbrush and applying a green tint around the flocked areas. This created a much more natural transition between the wood and the flock. The final touch is to add a couple of hangman's knots to this build. It's not the trickiest knot to tie, but almost anything is a bit more difficult when working at a tiny size. This actually took me a bunch of tries, but I eventually got something that I was happy with. Our little plague zombie can be used to measure the knot and make sure it's sitting right. And with that done, the medieval gallows are complete. The party was startled and did not know how to react to the scene. A man approached the group and introduced himself as the mayor of the town. He explained to them that the victim was a local merchant and that he's not the first to succumb to this strange fate. He then went on to tell the group that he'd reward them well if they could get to the bottom of this mysterious plague. A group of bandits were seen in town not too long ago, and I remember them harassing the merchant in his shop. I suggest paying them a visit since they could be responsible for what has happened here. Good luck.